Cisco Live 2023. You were there. You were tweeting. You were having the meetings. You were in the, uh, you took the shuttle bus between the hotel and the event. You were making it. I'm just kidding. You made it happen. Talk about what went on at Cisco Live. Yeah, Dana, it was a good three days there, kind of chock full, kind of rail to rail. Uh, but, you know, they gave us a little bit of time to work in between, so it was nice. But uh, this was all about, from my point of view, bringing simplicity to hybrid multi-cloud networking, security, and, and observability. And I think, you know, Cisco's really hitting, I think, two, two, two fundamental areas I think are are super important. So first of all, uh, as you know, and my audience knows, I'm a big fan of the hybrid multi-cloud fabrics, essentially ways of interconnecting your data, networking, security, observability, data management, everything, but cross-cloud, on-prem edge and across multiple IS providers and doing it in, in an easy way. And that's one of the biggest reasons I like Cisco's networking cloud and Cisco's uh, security cloud and also integrated in there is is observability so uh cisco is is working super hard and they have three of these cross cloud uh fabrics and i just think it's an absolute uh it's an absolute uh winner uh, one of the uh one of the things again uh is they've done in the last six months really leaning into is simplicity right <clears throat> to their credit right they realized they were part of the simplicity problem uh uh, with networking, I mean, command line interfaces, they're famous for it. And if you look at all the, the CNEs, the, the certified Cisco network engineers, I mean, that's, that's what they lived in, in and breathed off of. But they realized that, hey, uh, their, their customers want simplicity, their channel wants simplicity. So making it as simple uh, as possible and do, doing a lot of the orchestration uh, in the cloud and also uh, simplicity, even on security, right? If you look at one of the biggest areas of, of angst is integrating different security packages inside an enterprise. It takes a long time. It's difficult. Uh, many times you can leave open a hole and it takes so long that sometimes you're on that second or third version of that quote unquote best in breed uh, security practice. Uh, and Cisco's uh, wrapping all that up and uh, making it simple for you. Same thing from observ observability. Observability packages are like Kudzu too, right? You've got you know one for endpoints, one for uh, data center, one for your apps, one for APIs. It's it just spread all over, uh, all over the place. Um, my final comment uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on is is like everybody we've seen for the past two months, uh, they had to amp up their discussion on. Uh, generative AI. And I think uh, based in the context of the Cisco Security Cloud, they did a pretty good job talking about how they're going to be using generative AI to improve uh, security. Uh, I like I, I like in the future to in security to AI spy versus AI spy. And those who have the best AI will likely uh, win. So overall, I mean, you know, Cisco says that uh, their mission is to securely connect everything and make anything happen. And from my analyst point of view, that's exactly what the company is doing. Good show. Yeah, it seemed that way, Pat. And while I did miss it, I was uh, tracking the analysis from Ron Westfall, Craig Durr, and other future team members that were there. And, you know, we, of course, uh, cover a broad swath of the portfolio. Pat, I mean, look, AI is the thing of the moment and you know to be clear you know it's not a fad and so the generative ai play is more really about how ai can start doing more proactive for companies and by the way i want to say the architecture is good and i think cisco's got a really important moat to offer around uh, securing the enterprise uh, and using ai to do that i also think cisco's been doing this for a while which by the way is a bit of a sub theme of a lot of the customers that we deal with is that you know, they've been doing this a long time. AI suddenly got a market buzz and now they're adding more AI flavor to the top line of the story, but it was always really there. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, Pat, they, they've, they've had for a long time, you know, intent-based networking. What do you think intent-based networking is? Um, you know, it was always driven by machine learning and AI and the ability to make decision, optimizing and routing the network so that it would, uh, you know, be as efficient uh, and as,
productive as, as it possibly can be. Um, then you have, you know, the overall role that, it, you know, generative AI can play. Well, you know, I think what we got here was a, was a preview, you know, a preview of how, you know, the technology can move from a, um, you know, fragmented to more holistic. We can simplify policy. Um, you know, you, you've seen, you can uh, deal with things like quantum cryptography, uh, which is something that Cisco is promising that its generative AI powered capabilities are going to help with. So, you know, like all things though, there was kind of those few big takeaways, which in my opinion, the generative AI play was the kind of thing on display, but they had some pretty uh, promising announcements. Observability has been in, in, in style for some time at Cisco. I felt that that was a, uh, a focal point and something that we could definitely uh, lean into. And then, you know, you kind of see the rest of the portfolio. You know, there's question marks and some work that needs to be done around the WebEx and the collaboration platform. You know, we're seeing that portfolio lag the overall industry. But, you know, I mean, we're users at Futurum Group, so we still believe in this. But mm -hmm. how are they going to adapt and adopt? And, you know, you saw things like integrations recently with Microsoft Teams and others with Cisco, knowing that they, they're starting to see interoperability as a, as a key uh uh, capability. So Cisco Live, in because of Cisco's massive breadth of portfolio, it's hard to cover the whole swath. But I do think the generative-based security was probably the, the, the hottest topic of the, of the conference. And then I think, um, you know, their continued focus on observability <clears throat> software and shift to ARR were some of the other items that I think were really in, in, in focus as well, Pat. So yeah, um, day two, day two, day two, they did do a double click into the uh, UCAS um, and CCAS. Uh, part of that pretty impressive it's every, everything you would have expected right like uh, call notes things like that um so this was already using ai uh, to make uh, audio uh better but um yeah uh, analyst melody brew will have a write-up on that i've already uh published uh kind of day one insights on uh, forbes.com you can check it out in the show notes